안녕하십니까 삼성서울병원 이준행입니다. 한국보건산업연구원에서는 코리아 US 콜라보러티브 헬스케어 포럼 2019라는 행사를 LA에서 개최합니다. 현재 전세계에서 위암의 치료 성적이 가장 좋은 나라는 대한민국입니다. 한반도에 사는 한국인들은 위암의 진단과 치료에 있어서 좋은 성적을 보이는 반면 해외에 사는 한국 교민들은 이러한 혜택을 보지 못하고 있습니다. 따라서 해외에 거주하는 한국인들에게 우리나라의 발전된 위암 치료 혜택을 제공하기 위하여 다방면의 노력이 진행되고 있는데요. 그 중에 하나로 한국보건산업연구원에서는 헬스케어 포럼 2019를 LA에서 개최합니다. 제가 연자로 초대받았기 때문에 이번에 미국에서 발표할 내용을 여러분께 미리 소개시켜 드리도록 하겠습니다. 제목은 Endoscopic Intervention for Stomach Cancer입니다. 영어로 강의할 예정이므로 영어로 발표하도록 하겠습니다. Endoscopic intervention of gastric cancer includes bleeding control, stenting, ablation treatment, and endoscopic resection. Due to time limitation, I'd like to focus on endoscopic resection of early gastric cancers. Topics of my presentation will include various issues of ESD. I'd like to start with the history of gastric ESD in Korea. This is the first small clinical report on endoscopic treatment of early gastric cancer in Korea in 1996. Professor Jung Hyun Che performed all the procedures, and I was the first author of that report. At that time, I was a senior resident at Seoul National University Hospital. This is one of my early experiences of gastric ESD in 2005. I used paper medical records and Polaroid films at that time. This is a national statistics. For about three years, 23,000 ESD for EGC was done. In the year 2014, it was 7,734. The mean age of patient was 65 years and the male was 74%. Mean duration of hospital stay was 5 days. Medical cost in 2014 was 1,300 US dollars. Surgery was done in 6.6% within three months. Now this is the volume of surgery and ESD at my institution. More than 35 of gastric cancer patients are initially treated by ESD in the year 2018. Next topic is indications. There are two types of indications. Absolute indication means differentiated type mucosal cancer without ulcer and not bigger than 2 cm. Expanded indications include differentiated type oligastric cancers bigger than 2 cm and 
selected cases of undifferentiated type early gastric cancers. Now, this is a real world statistics. Among 355 oligastric cancers initially treated by ESD, 120 cases, this is 34%, belong to the beyond absolute indication group. Some of them require surgery. 10% of patients in the absolute indication group were initially treated by surgery and you can see the reason in the box at the right hand side corner suspicious lymphadenectomy is the most common reason for surgery in korea esd indicated candidates are usually selected by the absolute indications. After ESD, expanded criteria is applied to determine whether the resection was curative. There are controversies about the safety of ESD for expanded indication cases. It's partially because Korean study consistently showed higher risk of lymph node metastasis in expanded indication cases than Japanese data. I'll show you some examples. Korean practice guideline for gastric cancer was just released. The first statement is about the absolute indication. talk about expanded indication. Do you think total gastrectomy was necessary for a 45 years old lady with one centimeter signet ring cell carcinoma? In my opinion, it was too much. Less invasive options should be considered. What would you recommend for a 40 years old man, woman with a small flat signal ring cell carcinoma? I performed the ESD and the final pathology was signet ring cell carcinoma, 10 mm, limited in the lamina propria layer, clear resection margins, and no lymphatic invasion. ESD for expanded indication cases can be selectively performed in the individual cases. Flat, small signal ring cell carcinomas are frequently treated by ESD in Korea. Statement 2 is about expanded indications. They say ESD should be performed and the recommendation level was week 4. The next topic is the outcome. Outcome of endoscopic treatment EGC with the differentiated type histology is well established. We have ITT analysis, such as comparison with the surgery using propensity score matching. We also have PP analysis, such as long-term follow-up data after curative resection or non-curative resection. At my institution, we performed a propensity score matching analysis between the two groups, endoscopy resection or surgery for differentiated type early history cancers. The overall survival was almost the same in the two groups. Because of the metachronous recurrences, Disease-free survival and recurrence-free survival 
is better in the surgery group. However, there was no difference in the disease-specific survival. Next evidence is the PP analysis. It's a single arm, long-term follow-up data for curatively resected differentiated type early gastric cancers. Excluding metachronous recurrences, we experienced only one case of local recurrence and two cases of extra gastric recurrences. Uh, this is the overall survivor. There was no statistical difference between absolute indication and expanded indication. There are the pictures of the two extra gastric recurrences in our series. The top case belonged to the absolute indication group and the lower case belonged to the expanded indication group. This is another PP analysis for non-curatively resected differentiated type early gastric cancers. In cases with the risk of lymph node metastasis, 70% were operated and 30% were observed without surgery. In the surgery group, 11 have lymph node metastasis, which means 5.7%. In terms of the overall survival, additional surgery was related with better outcome. Survival benefit of additional surgery after non-curative resection was shown in a propensity-matched study by Dr. Om um at Korea National Cancer Center. As you can see at the right-hand side picture, the overall mortality of observation group was higher than that of the matched initial standard surgery group. Maybe we are doing too much surgery after ESD. Do you think surgery is necessary for mucosal cancer with lymphovascular invasion? As you can see in the red box, in lymphovascular invasion positive patient within the traditional absolute indication, mucosal cancer, differentiate type, no else, less than two centimeter, there was no lymph node metastasis in surgery. Careful observation without additional surgery can be an option for this group of patient. Final topic is education. There are four must knows before starting ESD. Indication and skills for careful endoscopic evaluation for candidate lesions. Advantages and disadvantages of each instrument. Strategies for technically successful ESD. How to manage complications. And hands-on training must be side by side. Different types of endoscopic knives are available in the market. Recently, hybrid knives mixing two different functions in a single catheter is getting popular. This case shows how I use the H-type ESD knife mixing dual life function and IT2 knife function. At first, 
I start with I type tip for marking and circumferential cutting. And then I change into O type knife for speedy submucosal dissection. I think it can make the procedure quite short. One step ESD knife has dual knife function and injector function in a single catheter. It's quite easy to change between them. Management of complication is a great part of ESD education. Most perforations can be treated endoscopically without surgery. When the resection is big and close to the cardia or pylorus, short-term oral steroid can be used for the prevention of obstruction. The hospital stay for gastric ESD is usually four days. For the beginners, Hands-on training using a pig stem stomach model is very useful. Before starting ESD for the first time, beginners should have some experiences as the first assistant. With some cases, the main operator usually gives the beginners to do part of the ESD steps. This ESD is the first procedure of my young fellow. Telementoring using iPhone FaceTime app is a very useful tool for ESD beginners. International mentoring is also possible. If you want some real-time comments from me, send me an email at stomachlee at gmail.com. Finally, I'd like to show you an unforgettable case. I performed an ESD procedure in a surgical ICU. The patient was on ECMO due to dilated cardiomyopathy and was waiting for cardiac transplantation. During the pre-cardiac transplantation workup, an early gastric cancer was found, so I performed an ESD at a surgical ICU. The procedure was done as usual, but the problem was delayed bleeding. The patient cannot stop warfarin after the procedure. Anyway, after a successful cardiac transplantation, the patient is still doing well at his home. Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to conclude my presentation by saying that ESD is widely performed for EGCs in the absolute indication in Korea. Annually, it's more than 7,000 cases. We are still very careful about expanded indication cases. It's done usually for flat signal ring cell carcinomas less than one centimeter. Starting the role of the first assistant is the beginning of learning ESD techniques. Thank you for your attention.